Oh. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast. I am Aldrima Harper, and I'm the host of the Organizepreneur podcast and the creator of the Declutter with Dream Challenge. And that is where I help female entrepreneurs to fulfill their dream of clarity, hope, peace, and sustainability. And I'm super, super excited today because I have my friend Rebecca here with me today, and uh, I'm I'm thrilled to have her here with me. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what she does. We're going to be talking a little bit about organizing and all of that wonderful stuff for the next few minutes. And so, uh, and before we do that, I'm going to share a little bit about uh, a little bit of her bio because. She says she's retired, <laughs> but I don't know about that retirement thing. Kind of like myself, I say I'm semi-retired, but you know, I'm still working. I don't think I'll ever retire. You know, I don't, I love what I do and I'm, you know, so, but uh, let me go ahead and read a little bit about her. And so uh, Rebecca lives in Calgary, Canada. Uh, she's worked as a pro programmer and systems analyst and then returned to academia to complete her PhD in psychology. Yes. Rebecca worked as a research, uh, research associate with a medical school at the university, uh, university excuse me, of Calgary and is still an adjunct professor with two departments at the university. And here's the thing. She says, although she's retired. She retired last year. She's still busy wrapping up her research projects and writing academic articles and supervising and mentoring uh, some students, five students. And so she has set up and I don't know if it's a relaunch or if you're, you know, launching, I'm, you know, you'll have time to uh, talk a little bit about that, but she's the owner of Lumina writing services where she helps her clients improve their written and verbal communication. And, uh, and she's also available to edit and pro proofread reports and manuscripts and presentations and other types of documents. So Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me today and welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today. So Thank you, you say much. you are, <laughs> yeah. So you say you are retired. So I get it. I get it. You know, we, we love what we do. And so you've been That's doing this like most of your life, not most of your life, but you know, early on. So this has been the bulk of your career in this type of um, uh, industry, you know, writing and things like that. Is that what you've been well, doing all, most of your life? I've always enjoyed writing and uh, I would say writing is probably one of my strengths. Um, so in a way, I, I think I've been doing this my whole life because even as a school child, I would, <laughs> I would edit my friends' <laughs> papers and I always had a little red pen that I would go, no, you spelled that wrong. It's like, no, if you just change the, so I think I've, I've, everything has led up to this moment where mm -hmm. I'm now going to actually do this for money, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do, but do something that I, I enjoy doing anyway, and just make this into more of a, a you know, a career, a, a second career, or a third career, really. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to, become fabulously wealthy or anything with this so this is just something that i want to keep my skills going uh keep my you know keep my mind active and i i just don't want to be bored in right. retirement so far that's not looking like that will ever be the case <laughs> You know, because I'll tell you, you know, what you bring to the marketplace is so needed right now. I mean, I think it's very, very timely for you to enter what I call our like our second phase in life, you know, and you're entering the market at a it's very timely because this is something that people 
really, really need. I can't tell you, <laughs> and I and I'm sure with your sharp eye for editing and proofreading and things like that, whenever you look on social media or you you know see you know, documents or websites or whatever, you're probably like cringing, like, oh my gosh, right? Do you ever, you know, does that ever happen? Oh, not just on social media, but I I subscribe to the Washington Post and I'm horrified sometimes <laughs> at, the, at the writing. And it's like, how did this get past you? Rita? <laughs> Don't you have a staff? <laughs> right. Very, very bad writing on occasion, not everybody, not all the time, but you know, I'm sensitive to seeing mistakes. Uh, they just kind of pop out for me. So when I see bad writing, I, I think to myself, you know, I, you know, if I had the chance, I would have loved to yes. <laughs> edit before published to it before yeah. you submitted. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what type of clients do you work with? Uh... Rebecca, how, what, uh, what kind well, of, you know, I'm, I'm, go ahead. I'm, I'm starting right now, okay. but um, so far it's been people who are academics okay. because I found uh, through my career that quite often really brilliant people, their ideas don't get wide uh, recognition because they don't know how to say it properly. Uh, they often are too technical. They use too much jargon. Um, they're just too complicated because it's all there in their heads. But to put it out onto paper or to actually present it is a real challenge. And so yeah. um, I help people with their articles or with their theses, you know, master's students, uh, PhD students, to actually put it into ways that other people can understand and that's yeah. why I called my company Umina because it's it's gonna you know make things clearer make make it um you know pop so that that people go oh so that's what they're talking about and it's not that difficult it's it's just rearranging things maybe taking some of the jargon out uh you know not having these huge complex sentences breaking sentences up into into pieces so so people can understand what is actually being said and it just reads better it just is able to be communicated better and that's what that to me is my real passion for this work is to make people's writing clearer so that other people can understand some really great ideas and have that out yeah, yeah. And I love the fact that, because um, I didn't think about it when I was um, saying the name of your business, but Lumina, does that, does that come from the word like luminate? I mean, you know, is that, yes. that's the essence of it? So, you know, yeah. kind of really yes. bringing, it's, it's yeah, yeah, light. light. So it's about yes. Food. Wow. And, uh, and also as, as a Christian, and, and I know you are as well. Yes. It's, you know, light is very important absolutely to, to us and i wanted to incorporate that as part of my company name as well to just say i want to be a light in yeah. a very very small small way in the world yeah yeah so you said that you just you just recently launching the business right yeah so how's that going how's that going so far well i'm i'm still in the process because i have been busy as as you know the, this retirement stuff is still yeah. <laughs> there's still quite a bit uh from my my past uh career um so i'm i've got i'm just creating a website and i just uh got all of the paperwork so i'm now on upwork so people can find me on upwork and uh give give contracts to me um once my website is done i'm going to build my own website yeah, actually, because that's eventually I will do for other people. Okay, I think that will be it's that I will offer because I do have a computer science background as well. Got so, it. you know, that is something I can actually create websites and host websites for other people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's still a work in progress, but I do hope to be really, you know, up and running within the next month. 
Got it. Okay. That's exciting. That's exciting. <laughs> so is there a favorite type of writing or documents that you like to like to do? In other words, do you prefer, you know, editing books versus, uh, and I know that it's, it's an academic, but is there a certain type of academia project that you like to work on that just really gets you gets your boat floating? <laughs> um, well, I think right now, because this is the the environment that I've just recently come out of or continue <laughs> to be in mm. is is articles uh, to be published um, because there are a lot of very, very talented researchers and academics who just can't get published because they just don't write well enough to compete uh, when they are, are submit articles for publication. People look and say, I don't know if they really know what they're talking about, or I don't know what they're talking about. So sorry. Um, I would like to help people, you know, uh, especially people maybe whose uh, first language is not English. Um, they are writing in English, but they don't quite have the flow of, uh, you know, uh, what a native English speaker would understand as being, you know, this is a, a well-written paper. And I can take other people's work and just revise it in small ways. So it's still their work. Uh, I'm not actually changing anything, mm -hmm. but I'm just improving. It. I'm making it clearer. I'm making it better so that they will be more competitive. But eventually, I do want to edit books and, you know, all sorts of other things. But that's down the line. Right yeah. now, I'm going to stick with what I do yeah. and gradually move into other things like website design or document design, presentations, all of these things. I have, you know, a little bit of uh, knowledge about, but not much experience. And eventually, I'll get that experience. Yeah. Wow. I've always admired people who write well. Um, I think I just think that is such a a a very powerful um, uh, uh, skill and talent, you know that that you guys possess. Um, my husband is a writer, as and but not he he's not a he writes scripts. And so that is, you know, kind of a different, you know, genre as opposed to, you know, academic uh, academia. But I've just always um, admired people who, you know, who are able to write and and editing is like a whole nother. That's like a whole nother level, you know, of being being able to look at, uh, you know, people's work and and help them to help their words to be illuminated, you know, um, you know, on, on paper. Do you find that, um, that, cause I, I heard somebody say that when you're writing, you know, you, you think, think like a PhD, but communicate it to as though it was a third grader or a fifth grader. Because sometimes, and I, I'm, I'm not, I, that's not the exact quote, but that's the essence of what he was saying, was that it should be simple enough, uh, simple enough to where a third grader could actually read it and comprehend it. But you, you know, the person that's writing, you know, you still want to make sure that you're bringing forth the concepts and, you know, whatever it is you're wanting the reader to, to, to comprehend. But I, I know sometimes we think that, you know, a lot of words, we have to make it, you know, a lot of words on the paper and all of this kind of stuff. You know, sometimes people are trying to impress people, you know, with their words and things like that. And um, so what do you think about that, that way of thinking, you know, thinking from a high level PhD standpoint, but yet being able to communicate it so that a third grader could comprehend it? What do you think about well, that? I think, I think it depends on your audience. I think if you are a PhD writing for other PhDs, you probably will stay at a high level. However, yeah. if you are a PhD who is um, you know, trying to get their ideas out to the general public, say in terms of some health benefits that they want people to know, writing as a PhD, 
I can guarantee that nobody will take your advice, no matter how good it is, because they don't understand you. Yes. <laughs> so definitely you have to look at your audience mm. and look at, um, you know, are you trying to to uh, make them change their behavior? Are you trying to entertain them? So it's the motive too. Like, what do you want your audience to do? What do you want them to come out of this uh, encounter with your words in some way? So there are, are different factors that you have to consider. But definitely, if you are writing for the general public, you do have to think about what they need, mm -hmm. you know, and write for what your audience needs and not, you know, to. Uh, to impress people, for example. And this is a real uh, problem that that people with a post-secondary education have. I, I've often told my students, stop trying to use the big words <laughs> because if you don't really know what they mean, yeah. then don't you. And, you know, trying to force all of these big words and complex sentences, it does not make you sound smarter it actually detracts from your message you know mm. say it simply use the number of words that need to be used and the rest can go <laughs> yes 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 so i know that you are mentoring uh some students so what do you you know what does that look like what you know is it to just tell me about that that's that, that's my question tell me about that Okay, so I have um, I have some undergraduate students and I have some master's students as well. Um, obviously, it's slightly different. So the but in all cases, I give them some one to one support. Uh, you know, if they have submitted a paper or they they're not happy with their work, they're mm -hmm. frustrated, then I will just you know, kind of support them and say, look, everybody goes through this. We didn't all start out as PhDs, you know, we, this is a process, but you learn from the process. And sometimes that means that things come back, you didn't ex get accepted or you didn't get the scholarship. Well, what can you learn from that? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of learning and uh, support to help them. Uh, with that I edit their papers <laughs> as mm -hmm. well just to make sure and I show them exactly what I'm looking for you know what would an editor uh, at a journal be looking yeah. for what are the pitfalls how how do you make this better and then they can you know take those pieces of advice and write and then I'll look it over and say that was great you know you you've learned exactly what um, what I, I had suggested and then they can move on from there. I, I don't ever want to um, tell them this is the only way to do this because yeah. there are multiple ways. Everybody has their own style of writing. Um, you need to honor that so it is their words but just give them the hints and the tips and the support so that they can feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. and confident in in going forward and you know writing um, yeah. in their own style yeah yeah I love that I so love that so I want to switch a little bit uh over to um the de the decluttering challenge because you went through uh the de the uh decluttering challenge I'm trying to say that not too quickly because it's not coming out <laughs> but um so you recently, you know, went through the decluttering challenge. And so what would you say? Well, let me ask you this. Why did you think that this was something, you know, important for you to do? And why did you join the challenge? Okay. Um, well, I, it's important to me because I, I know, Aldrina, you said you're a recovering hack rat. And mm -hmm. I would say put myself in that boat as well because I've had issues uh for a long time with just having too much stuff mm -hmm. too much out too much everywhere piles and stuff and the last decluttering challenge that I did with you 
was focusing more on paperwork. And that mm -hmm. is definitely a challenge for me because as mm -hmm. an academic, um, I have mm -hmm. forests full of <laughs> paper. I feel so guilty sometimes because of all the trees that have been cut down <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, um, you know, I, I definitely think that going through these decluttering challenges is, um, is helpful because you don't always know. You, you think you're the only one in this boat. You mm -hmm. think that you are the only one who has a messy house or mm -hmm. who has piles of paper everywhere. Well, we're not. And right. we, you know, I'm sure there are hundreds of thousands of people out there all thinking to themselves, oh, I'm such a bad person because I can't invite anyone over. My house is a mess. Mm -hmm. You know, I have papers everywhere. Or you feel overwhelmed that how will I do this? And I think joining something like your five-day challenge is really helpful for people because you realize that you are not the only one and mm -hmm. you may not even be the worst one. Yes. <laughs> there are people <laughs> with very, very, you know, uh, it looks terrible when yeah. you see the pictures and it's like, oh, well, maybe I'm not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still good to have, you know, uh, a community of people who are in the same boat. And so you can feel supported that when they say, you know, my office, I have trouble even closing the door in that office, go, yes, that's me <laughs> as well. I also have trouble. Or if they say, oh, my desk is piled high with a foot of papers, like, well, mine is a foot and maybe a couple of inches more than that. So yeah. it's, it's great to have that community of yeah. support. Um, yeah. And I really enjoyed, Eldrima, your your framework, your mm. APAC framework for, yeah. uh, you know, going through these things. And, and you have a really easy and, and um, just a very gentle way of going through this. Because I, I mean, I, I, I tend to be one of those people who, who go, oh, I must try this. And it's like, pull out your entire closet and do it all at one time it's like no i can't i don't have the time right. i don't have the motivation and i know i will fail at that but yeah yeah the, the way that you have laid out your framework it's very gentle very easy very non-judgmental you can do it at a little bit at a time and i really appreciated having that mm -hmm. and um you know, I've, I've tried to stick with that and, and yeah. keep consistently working through through the framework. Um, and it's it's really paid off. I've, I'm much more comfortable. If somebody says, uh, I'm half an hour away, can I drop in and see you? Before it was like, no, no, <laughs> you can't possibly. I'll be wow. at the coffee shop. <laughs> I yes. can't let you in my house. But now it's like, okay, give me five minutes. I'll just tidy up and it will not be perfect. I'm not looking for perfect, but they will be able to come in and not break their leg tripping on something. Yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. In the hall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you said that because I have been, you know, as you know, and I, I say it all the time during the challenges that you know, I'm very intentional about the type of non-judgmental environment that I want to create, you know, um, and that people, you know, there is a lot of shame and a lot of guilt around, you know, clutter. And so, you know, people are, uh, you know, they don't want to, you know, turn their cameras on or they want to, you know, blur the background or, you know, put the, the video image of the background. And to your point, um, you know, not have any visitors or, you know, things like that, you know, there, there's a lot of that around clutter. And so I really strive to make sure that people, you know, are okay. Cause it's, it, it's a journey. Like I always say, you know, it's a journey. Uh, and, but it's something that you have to be consistent at and there has to be some type of framework you know you don't have to go step by step exactly 
you know, as, you know, you know, as I presented, there may be some areas that you may think, well, you know what, I can kind of tweak this here, but you still are, you're still going by the overall framework of, of how to get it done. And that's why, you know, I, I wanted to have like a five, a simple framework. And I, I like for people to start with, you know, start small, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why, uh, that that's one of the things that really, really trips people up when it comes to, you know, getting organized and things like that. They want to tackle the whole thing, you know, like you were saying, and you just, you're just going to set yourself up for defeat. You just for failure. If you, if you try to approach it that way, you know, and so, and I recently, you know, you were saying uh, about the uh, recovering pack rat, so I recently changed the word because I felt like recovering felt I felt like I'm still trying to recover, right? <laughs> but uh, the um, I I changed it to redeemed to redeem uh, pack rat. Oh, uh, redeem organized pack rat, which means you know, which brings about a little bit different you know flavor, you know. So. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I just, uh, I so appreciate you, you know, saying that though. So what did you find that works best when uh, clearing clutter? Um, and what did you find that doesn't work? Mm -hmm. um, well, as you said, starting small is mm -hmm. really important uh, because I think um, we're often over ambitious. Yeah. Uh, and to my mind, this is a marathon. It's yeah. not a sprint marathon. Yeah. So you have to pace yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think you mentioned, you know, like a, a starting small. So it could be two ways. You could either start small by space. Mm -hmm. So a container, a drawer, um, you know, a, a filing cabinet, something, you know, manageable. Uh, and the other thing is time as well. I yeah. I live my life quite a lot with a timer. Yeah. So I will put 15 minutes on the timer, 20 minutes maybe. And, you know, that's good enough. If, yeah. if I do those 15, 20 minutes consistently, mm -hmm. then I'm going to see results. Yeah. Whereas if I try to do a three-hour marathon session, I will be exhausted at that yeah. time. And when you have that exhaustion, you don't feel like doing it again. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> so I, I find, you know, it's it's like exercise. If you do it in small things through the day, then you're going to see results. That's, yeah. that's just given. So, yeah. And you're not setting yourself up fairly because everybody should be able to find 10 to 15 minutes in their day to do yeah. something. Yeah, small. absolutely. Well, absolutely. I, I do find that that, um, you know, bite sized chunks is a very mm -hmm. important thing of the whole decluttering journey. Yeah. Um, and I think being kind to yourself. Yeah. You know, not, you know, because that guilt and shame is mm -hmm. definitely there when you have a cluttered house and, mm -hmm. you know, you need to reward yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you mentioned that too, as as part of your yeah. framework. It, we need to be kind to ourselves and mm -hmm. say, you know, okay, I maybe I I didn't get as much done today, right. but tomorrow I will. And look how far I've come mm -hmm. in this. When you see that clean desk or that, you know, that sorted, organized file drawer, yeah. you go, wow, yay me! Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then you know, give yourself a treat. Give yourself a, you know, a, I I make time for for reading or yeah. you know going for a walk or or doing something that I've been putting off because I I you know just felt I didn't have the time. Well, make that time for yourself because yeah. you are worth that time and you've done something important. You've done something that was uh you know, of, of benefit to you. So give yourself that, that extra reward. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Well, Rebecca, thank you so much. I so appreciate you. And just uh, for the listeners, um, reach out to Rebecca. Her information is going to be um, either below or above, or it's going to be, you know, linked to the website and to the podcast when it airs. And so make sure that you reach out to her. Um, and uh, so, and if you are interested in attending any of the Declutter with Dream uh, challenges or workshops or anything like that, make sure you just go to declutterwithdream.com and you'll, you'll find out and you'll see where uh, or in when, and you'll find out all the particulars about the next uh, event. So Rebecca, thank you so much. I so appreciate you. And uh, just, you know, I just love you so much. And so I just think you're just amazing. And uh, I just can't wait to see how you just illuminate everyone's world, you know, with your skills and your talents and the things that God has called you to do you know, here. So I am so excited for you. And I just really appreciate your time. And um, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Oh, welcome. And thank you, Audrina. You are doing fantastic work because it, this is a calling um, mm -hmm. that you have accepted. And yeah. I, I think that everybody, and, and that's the thing, you don't just have to do the a five day challenge once you can do it multiple times because Absolutely. every time you do it you will get something else out of it mm -hmm. and uh, yes. you know you have statistics and and you have you know hints and tips that you are continuously updating so yeah. every time someone does it they will get something different mm -hmm. and also the support and that reinforcement of, yeah. of good good practice good habits so yeah yeah i strongly recommend that um that people do mm -hmm. do your challenge and, and reach out to you and uh, accept your help thank you so much rebecca i really appreciate you and so with that said <laughs> everyone make sure you reach out to rebecca or go to declutterwithdream.com. She is also on LinkedIn and Upwork and all of that, but all of that information will be uh, available to you if you want to reach out to me. I'm also on LinkedIn and all the social media plat uh, platforms. And so, but definitely uh, she said it best. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today on the Organizedpreneur Podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>